Welcome back for another episode of More to the Story. I'm Farron Moore. I'm to hear more. And today we have comedian Brandy Denise, Hi. an yeah. actress. And yeah. what else? What else we do? Content creator, yes. writer, producer, <laughs> all of that yeah. shit. Yes, Brand- improviser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, improv. You know what I mean? Do it all. Nice, nice, That's nice. That's such a cool backdrop. And you, uh, um, thank mm-hmm. you. She says oh. cool backdrop. Hello, yeah. baby. You see the arch. You see what we out here doing. I like that. Thank you. And I'm sure it's a few people I know um, in here are regulars, and you probably seen her in Zoom in too. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so Chris thank you for joining us. Chris recognized her immediately. Hey, Brandy. Right, <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Brandy. I'm happy you're here. Um, okay, so just jumping in real quick. How the hell are you? And uh, um, <laughs> <the> face. <one. laughs> Tell us how the hell you are, and give us three things that you're grateful for right now. Ooh, um, oh yeah. Okay, including so including them eyebrows, right? <laughs> <laughs> she lifted them. <laughs> um, I am doing okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And um, one of the things I'm grateful for, I got to talk to my niece, who's like maybe six months. Yesterday, I got to sit on video chat with her and sing to her. And I haven't met her yet, so. Yeah. And then, uh, what's another thing I'm grateful for? Um, my new apartment. Come on, now. okay. Yeah. Do Come you, on, new apartment. Do you blast Ari Lennox' um, song "New Apartment"? No, oh, I should listen. To you it. should listen. Got my a new apartment. apartment. Yeah. It ain't got no furniture. <laughs> oh no, that's not my life. <laughs> 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 I, like, I like it. Sounds like a Her, vibe. Hers was more of a first apartment <laughs> song, yeah. but okay. yeah. It's good. It's, good. <laughs> it's, it's a good, good song. Vibe. It's good time. It's good time. But yeah, your apartment and um, the ability to come do things like this. <laughs> this is, come this on, is like man. my job. So I'm very blessed to be able to have fun for a living. Oh, I thought about that the other day. Or it was like last week sometimes. Like, I ain't had a real job. Like, we're clocking in, going to a physical location since 2017. God has blessed me to literally do what I want to do, make a living off of it, a sustainable living off of it, provide for my family, and we want for nothing. And that's such a blessing just to be able to say that. Mm -hmm. Because this shit is scary. It like is. you, you plan this certain shit. You might get a call. You're like, oh, I got one show next month. And you know, all right, that show's gonna be good. But like, we're literally walking by faith week by week because we don't know what's gonna come up until you right. get a phone call or a text. Are you available this day? Mm-hmm. And that shit is like, I remember the first couple years. I'm like, I'm just freaking out, pitting out. When I'm thinking, like, I don't know what's gonna happen next week. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we gonna. Play. And then shit just always came up, mm-hmm. and a way was always provided for. Now it's just like on cruise control with mm-hmm. like knowing something's gonna come through every right. mm-hmm. every month something comes through it's just something, like yeah, yeah mm-hmm. and it's just like oh shit that takes care 90 percent of my yeah, bills this right. one thing does. so <laughs> it's yeah, such a it, blessing to be walking my faith like that man it is. yeah and it, it does feel good to just not have that concern mm-hmm. anymore that we used to have like you know assholes used to be tight like boy ah. yeah i mean my mom would put <laughs> early in our marriage my mom would put like Hundred fifty dollars in my account or something back home. Yeah, and we would be so excited because like, everybody could get their own pizza. That's so nice. And we nice. would buy a movie on Prime, and that was <laughs> that was our Saturday night. Like yeah. that was that was it. Mama paying for date night. Oh right, my god, right. yo! Like I it love was it. so. Oh, yeah. it, yes. they, in the, it's just like when you are in a certain level of your life, the yeah. things that mean the most to you, like that, that meant a lot. That was just a yeah. night out. And, and those now, conversations, like, you know, my mama being thousands of miles away and she would call me and she would hear it in my tone even when I would try to hide it. Like, hey, ma, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. What's mm-hmm. going on? Tell me, what do you need? And it's like <laughs> everything. <laughs> like, uh-huh. <laughs> you, can you come here yeah. and uh, her mom, just her, her mom comes out a me. lot. Well, just hold me. She used to. Used to, yeah. yeah. Now, she, now she got a little boo thing and she'll be coming out. out. Like, oh, see, mama, mama, she, gotta, also, mama gotta have a life. Listen, she right. listen. <laughs> she moved she to be closer to the dick. I was no, like, she did not. I was like, damn. She's actually further away from it. So they gotta, they really gotta work hard and spend time together. She actually 
she moved further away, more further away from her penis. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably a tough move, right? But you know, it was in the works before they met, and she was like, "Well, this is my plan, so you just gonna I, have to." I, yeah. I, I love that, right? Because I didn't expect. I was like, "She gonna back out of this move because she done met this nigga," and she was like, "Honey, no, I gotta go." And I was like, mm-hmm. "Okay, I see you." Mm-hmm. Um, I raised her right. Um, <laughs> you raise the right. <laughs> so um, we do combo cards here, Brandy, okay. and I have three different decks. There's levels to it, and I will let you pick what you're comfortable with. I will pick the cards. You will pick the deck. Okay. So the first one are these um, icebreaker cards, starter set from the Best Self Company, and they're just questions uh, to general break the ice brand questions. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, this is the ace metaphors tonight's conversation. This is the 60, 69 questions for after dark deck. And these are the, um, who is the biggest pervert cards. Okay. (laughs) And so whichever, I would would always say me, but a fan is probably way more of a pervert. Oh yeah, I am. Yeah. I am. I feel like women usually are. Yeah, yeah. and I'm not vanilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because most women are open with. You're their, not like, vanilla. I just realized, like, oh, like you're not a freak. You're a pervert. Yeah. So once I realized that, <laughs> that's I'm where a freak. She my is a proud, pervert. <laughs> my proud pervert merch came from. Right. Um, still available. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I was like, you know, I'm just going to embrace it. This is who yeah. I am. Um, Wave your yeah. flag. Right. <laughs> 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 but um, which deck? It's early. Let's start with the icebreaker. Oh, yeah. boo. <laughs> no, I she thought you were from the shot. She, I she. thought you were from the shot. <laughs> Niggas are scared out here. Niggas okay. ain't waving their flag. That's crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. We're doing three from this deck. Niggas ain't That's waving their flag, bro. That's crazy. Wait till I tell okay. my homies yeah. back in the hood. Three cards. Three questions, rather. Um, I pulled a, if you could, a life and experiences. They have different categories in this deck. So the first one, Mm -hmm. if you could know when and how you are going to die, would you want to know? (laughs) I feel you. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I would live in fear. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Just regretting and not really even regretting, but dreading that day. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So you probably on. wouldn't even leave the house anymore. Depending yeah. on what it was, it's just like you would try to avoid that at all costs. Yeah. And it's just, I don't, mm mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I dig it. Um, next question What one accomplishment are you most proud of? Um, ooh, hmm. Um, hmm, that's hard. Um, Hmm. I guess just kind of being able to have the having the tenacity to just pick up and leave. Yeah, like that's I, big. I left Florida, went to Chicago. I left Chicago and just went to LA, and it was a lot of just yeah, just doing that. That's not something that anybody, a lot of people around me were doing. But I also, my parents were in the military, so as growing up, mm-hmm. I went to a bunch of different schools. Yeah, I lived. We lived in a different country for a while, so we moved around a lot. And so I think like. Just yeah. being a kid, always have to, having to reacclimate myself. It was like as I got older, it was like, oh, you just move to another city and start another life. It's yeah. easy. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you got some aliases out there. She be filling right. out medical work that and it'd be work. like, if yeah. other names you're known, you yeah. use it. That She's wasn't like, convincing the way she it said wasn't. it. <laughs> right? It wasn't even a clear uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. <laughs> Who have you been talking to? I know. It caught me off guard. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. You said just pick up and start another life. I'm like, she is known. It's Brandy with an E back in mm-hmm. Florida, but right. <laughs> Brandy with a Y Brandy in Chicago. And a y in the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, okay, last question. What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you during a date? Oh my goodness. I, <laughs> it went straight. I immediately know exactly what it is. Oh shit, this is good. Um, <laughs> I was going, I had actually, went, I've only probably went out with like maybe three comics in my whole life. Uh-huh. I went out with this comic who had a huge crush on me. I wasn't like that 
into him, but I was like, let's just see how it goes. And so um, he took me to this Italian restaurant, and I was actually on this uh, medicine, and I wasn't supposed to drink, and I forgot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I drank a glass of wine, and like five minutes into the day, I was like, excuse me. Real cute. And then mm -hmm. I went to the bathroom and projectile vomited. Oh, shit. Like, it was like exorcist vomited. Yeah. Like, on the back wall. of. I missed the whole toilet. God oh. damn. It was like on the floor, <laughs> on the <laughs> toilet, on the back wall. Like, it was just throw up everywhere. Yeah. Wow. And so, I, I, I cleaned myself up. I came out. I was just like, hey, I... It's not feeling well. I got to go. Yeah. And then, like, the waiter was like, hey, guys, just in case, you know, like, somebody just, like, threw up really bad in the bathroom, so you guys might not want to use that bathroom. Like, he God came and told damn. us about it. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> 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 the way she said that's crazy lets me know she definitely has aliases that's crazy. out there. Right? <laughs> mm, that's crazy. And so then I left. And, like, the guy was just, like, if you, like, texted me, if you didn't want to go on a date with me, you could have just said it. Like, the food didn't even come yet. And, like, all this shit just overload. And I'm, like, yeah. bro, I'm, like, vomiting home. Yeah. Like, stop. Shit. Yeah. So, yeah, God, that please. was... That was embarrassing for me. I knew that that happened. He, did, he, he didn't know it happened, but I just felt so him, bad for the person him? who had to clean it up. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> I think I told him years later, uh -huh. after he had married like a white girl, he didn't like black women anyway. So <laughs> he was like, this wasn't going anywhere, yeah. sir. I didn't need to stay. <laughs> I like, led you to what you really wanted. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Right. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Okay. Um... I'm happy you brought up uh, the actually that both of the, those things were perfect. You bringing up, I mean, you talking about your date and you bringing up our parents and stuff because today we are talking about introducing partners to your loved ones. So Ooh. not just parents, but um, of course they play a, a big role in it as well. Mm -hmm. And um, just jumping in it, what do you have like a, a system? to how you introduce Like a certain people. amount of time. Or... Wow. I feel like you're asking the wrong person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I do not have that type of life. Okay. In the sense of what? Like introducing to parents or like dating somebody long term? And, yeah. I don't right. have long term what's the, what's, the, what's the longest yeah, that you've been with somebody? I was just about to ask um, Two years. I've only had two guys I've ever introduced to my parents. Okay. okay. And um how long did you wait before you did it, or did so you? So with the first guy, which was probably like seven, eight years ago, um, it was probably maybe like within that first year, mm -hmm. and it was he was in Chicago with me, so he came down to Florida and by my parents, and then this last guy, um, it was like at the end. At really? the end. Yeah, he just happened to come visit me, and then I was like, oh, let's go meet my parents. But I had been wanting him to meet my parents for like a year, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he just was like making up a whole bunch of excuses. And then he met, he hung out with me, my mom, and my dad. And then it was like, I think in his eyes, it got like, he, he was like, oh, I want this more after mm -hmm. he hung out with all of us. Yeah. Because my parents have been married for 34 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so seeing our family dynamic, but it was also a weird place because I had kind of already. Like, I had already been wanting all of these things. And so it was like, by the time he met them and he wanted more, I was like, I don't want to do this. You guys this. checked out a yeah. little bit. Yeah. I okay. always like meeting chicks' parents and stuff. Like, I'm, I'm really good with families. Like, moms love me. Dads always try to put up the hard thing, but they end up liking me because I'm a fucking likable guy, right? I'm mm -hmm. charismatic as fuck. And I didn't grow up with a strong family unit. Mm -hmm. So I would, like, adopt my fam. I mean, my, my the person I'm dating's family. Right. And usually, like, that gave me a sense of belonging. Yeah. And also, like, just, a, like, a community. Yeah. Because like, I didn't really, like... I wasn't like excommunicated or anything with my family, but like I, we just we just didn't. You weren't that. We were, yeah, it was the same mm, thing. Like yeah. we didn't have the same goals aligned. I didn't have any positive male influence. It's not a lot in my family that I could turn to for advice or anything like that. So it was cool to have that in my life, right. even if it was from somebody else's point of view or somebody else's family. Right. So mm -hmm. I liked it. Yeah, I was like because you know my family was also my friends. Yeah. I was, I didn't care. The day, mm -hmm. You can meet my mom the day I met you. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. care about any of that. My sister met, you know, um, everybody. Like, I just never tried to keep 
mm-hmm. anybody, especially not if I was seriously dating them. Now, if we're just messing around, mm-hmm. then it's no, I wasn't trying to keep you a secret, but I wasn't yeah. in a push to, to yeah. for you to meet. But my mom still met some of them yeah. and mm-hmm. it was like no big deal. She didn't care. It's so. also like f- since I've been 17, I haven't been in the same city as my parents. Mm. Mm. And so to come meet my family is it's a, like it's a, a big deal. Yeah, it's thing, yeah. Yeah. And it's not even that it's a big deal. Like my parents are cool as fuck. Well, I mean, like an investment. Like it big is. Deal. Yeah, right. You got to pay for the tickets. Well, my mama, she be talking to niggas on the phone. Yeah. But what about <laughs> you <laughs> meeting, <laughs> the, <laughs> meeting their the parents, phone. though? Man, this is like a hard conversation to have. I don't have nobody. I don't be dating nobody <laughs> like serious like that. Like I don't know. I'm about to get emotional, but yeah, uh, I don't, don't get that. emotional. I'm sorry. I, I, so, I, it's so, and I know people like look at me and they think like, oh, she da, da, da. and it's like I really don't be having like serious. stuff. I be trying to have serious stuff. I don't know. I don't know what be Do happening. You, are you <laughs> are you more of a dater and? who wants something serious or you just dating and something serious happens it, it you go with the flow um i used to just be would go with the flow girl and now i'm intentionally dating mm-hmm. and uh it's just mm, i don't really know i feel like i meet more parents than parents i, I feel like i've met more guys families mm-hmm. than they've met mine yeah. yeah and in most situations like yeah i mean i'd be like for instance, my ex, his his dad loved me. And yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. And then my other ex, his father loved me. Like, these, these their dads always fuck with me heavy. Yeah. They be like, you got one, son. And then, they, <laughs> then they sons don't be thinking they got one. And then it just be like, man, what are you doing with this girl? Hey, you niggas, niggas, I'm like, you niggas. can't listen to your daddy. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. wait, you just said you, you met more guys parents so was that a big deal for you was there a lead up was it somebody was trying to make you meet too fast or um no i feel like it was a very natural organic thing i also haven't dated a lot of people who weren't close with their family and that's not even anything that i like try to do i just feel like it's just something that i kind of it's just something that can, like most of the men that i date are very close to their family okay so, okay and so i feel like it's just like an organic thing like oh, oh when, when me and my dad go bowling on saturday want to come oh shit oh okay kill i never did anything like that with my mom we used to go to the goodwill on saturday <laughs> morning to go to shopping at hood's lot but that, that was about it like yeah. i probably spent more time with my mom's Boyfriend who was probably like at this point, More, I mean, common loud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we went skating every Saturday at Skate King. He was a big dude, like, yeah. he had a belly and all that. He looked like a black Santa Claus because he had a fro and a mm. beard and all this shit. <laughs> and uh, we used to spend a lot of time and together just you know, going skating and shit like that. But like, me and my mom didn't really, I mean, movies, we, we used to go to drive ins and shit like that. So, but you're not talking during the movie, so. Right. Um, yeah, we just didn't we didn't have like the closest relationship like that. My mom, I knew she loved me, but my mom was not a hugger like that. Oh. She's not a kisser like that, and that transferred to me. So mm-hmm. like with Fam, we'll be out and we're walking. I have to make a conscious mm-hmm. effort and decision to like hold her hand. I put my yeah. arm around her waist or around her because I just don't move like that. Yeah. And in the beginning, it was weird for her because she. One of her love languages is, is physical mm-hmm. touch. Like just mm-hmm. like just walk by and do shit like that. I walk by her ass in the house and just keep on but moving. When I tell you, he like will move all the way out the way, like against the wall to like shimmy. And I was like, you know, it's okay for us to graze each other. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. I, I, like that that little bit of contact no means the world fucking. to me. Lord. But he's like, ain't no excuse, touching excuse, unless excuse we me. fucking. Now like, we no. fucking. We, we fucking. We, it's different when we fucking. Her foot okay. is in my mouth when the we fucking. The only time we touch will not be when we. Fucking I, so, okay. I had to listen. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't a I'm very I, I wasn't a very affectionate person. Yeah. And I'm still learning how yeah, to be better. Like he still learned, like I'll see, I'll see the wheels turn. I mean, you know, in his, the gears turning in his head because he'll see another couple yeah. being affectionate or being cutesy. But I I don't say anything because I know that's not how he moves. That's yeah. so good. But he'll see it and he'll be like, oh right. Yeah. Touch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I told her like part of that, excuse me, part of that is upbringing and also part of that is the way I was raised. Right. And I moved out at 14. And so mm-hmm. I always had my head on a swivel because I'm young out here alone and I know people will take advantage of me. Right. And so and then my environment that I was raised in, like niggas uh, you know, so if you look at sweet, you're not paying attention, niggas will get you. Right. So like when we're out like, I, I'm always like this. I'm always just looking around, and 
I felt like for a long time, we just talked about this. We discovered this a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, if I'm holding your hand and being cutesy and all in your face, luffy dovey, I'm not watching the surrounders. Somebody mm-hmm. walk up on us, pull a pull a burner out, you know, snatch your purse and run and shit like that. Cause we looking sweet. Right. We're looking so involved in each other that we're not paying attention to our surroundings and we look like an easy target. Right. And so I've always like had that mentality that like I walk a little in front of her to protect her against whatever mm. might come. Especially now that like we're in an industry and people are just so comfortable running up on mm. us, phone already out. It's to a point like a couple years ago, they'd be like, hey, can I get a picture? But now people will walk up on me with their phone already out, camera already on, mm-hmm. like, yo, let me get this picture real quick. It's not even a question. Yeah. It's like, it's more of a command. And it's like, before she was in this setting, like, that wasn't her thing. Right. And the same thing with the kids. So like, I always was like trying to put myself in between her or them and whatever might be coming up to us because I didn't want, I didn't want her to be exposed to that unless it was on her terms. Right. Mm-hmm. And now that she's in it, it's a little more easy to to walk and, and freely to walk like that. You know, she'll take the picture with the person or for us uh, with the person, but it's it's just like I I take my role as a protector very seriously. And that's good. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So like my my goal is to always make sure she's safe right. when we're out versus like be more intimate and right. you know just It's like do you want your kiss do you want a kiss or you want your life? Yeah, yeah. And that's <laughs> like, that's that's, yeah. that's really how I looked at it. And like I'm trying to like just find the balance of, you know, be able to at least hold her hand and still be able to watch my six and shit like that. But yeah. it was it was a struggle and it was something that I didn't even know I was doing. I wasn't aware of it until I would see another couple or something like that. Or until we had a conversation, she was like, yeah. I would like more PDA, but mm-hmm. I know that's not your thing. So it's not. And it actually came up because we were using conversation cards. Yeah. So okay. we, the conversation would have never come up because I'm never like, he doesn't up. move that way. And he's, you know, probably thinking at the time. She understands that I don't move that way. But when the card made us ask that question, ask and answer that question, it was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was, I was, there's I, strong feels on both sides about this, I wanted actually. to do more. Yeah. I just felt like I had to be this way. Like, right. <laughs> I don't look menacing. Wait, do it again? Yeah, it was something like that. Like, <laughs> the chick, when she was like, what's up, nigga? She like charged up for the chick like that. That's how I feel like I got to be out because I don't, I don't like... Like, outwardly look menacing. I don't look menacing enough for people to not want to rock up. It's the so, freckles. It is. And the ginger hair. And I got a <laughs> smile. And you got these pink, big pink guns. Like, niggas like, yeah, yeah. I'm not threatening. I'm adorable, nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I always had to, like, I felt like I had to do more to protect myself and not look like a target. So, yeah. yeah. We, we get it, babe. It's okay. No it one's okay. No one's I'm always killing it. niggas. <laughs> it's it's real good that she uh that you didn't take that and internalize it though. No, like that part, no. Like I was just like, that's just who he is. I was so bad at it to the point like sometimes we would have a conversation and it would get emotional. Like she's crying on a bed and I'm sitting here. This is the distance between us. We're talking about some shit, maybe about the marriage, whatever. And I'm like, nigga, hug me. And she like, <laughs> one time she specifically said while she's crying, because I'm just sitting there like, I don't know what to do in this situation. And she was like, this is the part where you rub my back and tell me it's going to be okay. Aww. Because I can give that shit to a stranger or somebody I'm Yo, not emotionally connected to. he's so to. thoughtful and so eloquent and got all the good advice and all the like love for somebody like outside, especially when he's not attached to what's bothering mm-hmm. yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. But when when it's me and it's at home and he's attached to yeah. what's what's bothering me, he don't know what the hell to say. I'm, like, and I'm the complete yeah. opposite. Yeah. I, if I'm the cause of it or if I'm attached to what's bothering you, I'm there. I'm full all of affection. I have all the conversation. If I have I nothing like, to do I'm with enough. it, I'd be like, good luck, friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's she, all she you gonna get from me. She is very in that situation <laughs> with friends, but whereas I'm like, I would be Googling need, what to say. Hey, yeah. do, you, do you need me to put you in a room? Like I'm like that. That is type of accommodated. But with her, I'd be like, <laughs> because it's like I don't want to do the wrong thing and make things worse Yeah, and I don't know like I just don't know <clears throat> my wife and I've said this on stage I've said this on the podcast before is the first person to show me unconditional love like when I told my mom at 14 that I was going to have a kid our relationship changed up until that point my mom was my best friend and so <clears throat> I can't say I even knew unconditional love from her what was that sound but I was clearing my throat <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> girl, fuck you. <laughs> I'm just saying, nah, you gave yeah, me a hard right time the, before right, for right clearing my Right in the middle, we said unconditional. Like, you know what? Fuck fair. I still fuck love you. What your nasty <laughs> throat bad, ass. <laughs> fuck bad boy as a record label in a company. Fuck the staff. I still love you, nasty nah. throat. Oh, girl, fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Okay. So this um topic came up because I often I crack I make fun of the fact all the time that his mama don't like me. And mm, um she loves her. We went it on was the just, together. Uh, and just thinking about um how she and I met and um how it was like a big deal for him to introduce me to his I mom. Know, like I, I didn't he mean, planned, like, yeah, he planned like a dinner, and it was both of our moms, me and that. my mm. daughter. And so my mom was like, "Why he want both? Uh, why she both mamas with, here? Is yeah. this like an engagement thing?" And I was like, "Child, no. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we ain't even fun, there. Yeah, I don't yeah. know." We were still using condoms. Yeah, I don't even really know why he wants to do this, but he this is what he wants to do. So we gonna show up. Yeah, you know, because we weren't even a couple at this point. Yeah, like that's real cute. But we was right? fucking, we was fucking regularly. We were, yeah. we were, but we but there was no problem. commitment. Yeah. There was no like we we had commitment issues, and we both respected that fact. Mm -hmm. okay. So <laughs> so like we were not in a committed relationship, but we he wanted to do a whole parents meeting thing mm -hmm. and so we did it but just thinking about that whole process and how it's such a on for him it was such a big deal for mm -hmm. but for my mom she was like I, I meet everybody yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. I meet everybody like everybody mm -hmm. comes over my mom would she would cook faster for my niggas than she would for me Sheesh. oh she, yeah well, her mama come out boy. let me tell you something <laughs> Them titties be in the kitchen she just a swag and making pancakes. Oh my God. Her mama loved her not, living no bra on, she boy. She did not care. If she had been at work all day, if she came home and I had a guy I was date, dating sitting at the house, my mom would go into the kitchen and she would whip up food. Yeah. She did not. And because she knew I wasn't going to do it. I don't right. cook. I was going to say, me. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, because your mom is in there setting right expectations. Here. Yes. They're like, oh, this what you come from? This is mm -hmm. what I come from. This is not what I do. This is not what I do. I don't cook. That's I don't clean. <laughs> oh, I'm clean. I ain't cooking. She'll clean. I'll let somebody She'll else clean cook. before our cleaners come. Our cleaning <laughs> lady comes on Wednesday and we'll straighten up Tuesday night. <laughs> Oh, Wednesday before they get That's there. That's respectable. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't want them to think you're trifling and shit right, like right, that. Right, right, yeah. right, right. But like we, you know, that but that's what she's like. Oh, let me get this these toys out this. Let sink. me take it. <laughs> let me take it. Oh yeah. shit. Yeah, because she'll have the whole I mean, gallery. It was like they Plugs, did not have the rolls, the suck things, the womanizer. Had like four bottles of lube, lube. just sitting on the we bathroom be sink, crazy. and I was like, let me put these away before she goes. Yeah, we go crazy. That's why we tell her, like, don't go. In this room, like with that certain days, like we like don't, don't clean don't, the office because it's, it's some shit in there. We got three don't tripods up room. and shit. The lights going up. We be going crazy. But um, yes. So I was just wanted to um just talk more about what that's even like. With even with okay, outside of parents, so you have close friends that are or your are you careful about even if you're just dating somebody. Who me? Who you bring around your friends? Um, typically, I'm not the type of person to lollygag. If I like you, then you 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 cool. You you gonna come around? Like yeah. uh -huh. you've met somebody I've dated before. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I brought him. That was like the first person I brought around comedy because I like him. But yeah. like, I typically don't spend a lot of time like just hanging out with people I don't like. Yeah, so, <laughs> I feel it, Yeah, so it's 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 a fairly easy thing. I'm not gonna say I like jump into it but once it's like oh yeah I like you then you could come around Yeah. Mm -hmm. but once you come around my friends when I see you around doing mm -hmm. nothing else cause don't <laughs> we, embarrass me we, we, uh, <laughs> we recently were at breakfast we were at brunch and uh, we saw a, a friend's <laughs> partner there and uh, <laughs> we were like oh yeah such and such and immediately I was like fuck oh please don't be up here with another chick please don't be up here with another chick right and, and we both are just and, went into yeah like crisis mode <laughs> like fuck I right, just bracing for impact 
And uh, Farron was like, you should go ask him what he's doing here. I was like, I will. She's like, no, nah, I'll do it. I said, no, nah, no, nah, I'll do it. Cause your tone be fucked up. No, I was going to fix my tone before I got there. Yeah, so I just went outside. I definitely hey, was... nigga, what you doing in my hood? He's like, yeah, I'm waiting for a group of friends. Shorty couldn't be here, so I'm going to breakfast with her friends. I'm like, all right, we'll come to my table. We get some drinks and all of that before we go, before they get here. So he, he sits down. I already cleared it, right? As soon as he sits down, Farron's like, hey, friend, how you doing? Fuck you doing up here. <laughs> Same breath. We talking about she going to fix her tone. I did doing? not say it like that. What the fuck you doing in my hood? I didn't say it like that. What you saying like? I didn't say it like What you saying like? I was like, hey, friend, what you doing in my hood? Uh-huh. Because yeah. I also wanted him to tell me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. See, this nigga Repeat right here. Repeat the story. Yes. <laughs> Start from the top. Right. Well, I'm about to make sure. I'm an Aries. Like, this... This ain't this math ain't mathing. Like you better fix it before I start calculating. Right. <laughs> Cause like I'm, a, I'm a fact check. I, I like that. Um. Yes. But I was I was definitely ready to just be like, oh hell no, we finna flip this whole restaurant right uh, well, upside down. Well, hold on now, because it was a, it was a brand new picture of drinks there, so we're not gonna flip the whole. Thing <laughs> we're get this alcohol over here first before we do that. Save the drinks. Listen. Oh, that's, that's save the drinks. Abuse. Right. Alcohol abuse. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but ooh, I'm messing up stuff. I did. I unplug your computer. No, nah, you said it's in there. So, um, just in thinking about our own experience with that, I got to thinking, you know, like what is this like for other people, and especially today, and um, because the people move so so differently today than they did what when we meet almost 2005. Fucking 20 years ago mm -hmm. so um that's why cuz i figured you could give me some some 2022 i definitely feel still like out there on the prowl information if um yeah you cuz i mean i don't like if my my friends don't know they usually know, like, the one person mm. or the main person I'm talking to. My friends ain't never going to get niggas mixed up because I'm not introducing <laughs> them to, like, three niggas. So, uh, but I'm also not the type of person, like, and I probably have been doing it wrong. I'm also not the type of person to get, like, involved with, like, several people at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I like you, I kind of focus my attention, and maybe that's where I've been losing because <laughs> I need to have a plethora. Let, let them know yeah. you got options. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I got niggas. You know I get niggas. <laughs> she know I get niggas. Why I got to show you I get niggas? Um, <laughs> that's what the meme say. But no, I feel like I'm very much a, like... Like I, I focus my attention on uh, that, so I don't. I'm not the type of person to just have like people around mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but damn it! It was a question I had in mind to ask to fo follow up that it'll come back. Mm -hmm. But I also want to see like you know, and that feels good too when you like bring me around your friends, oh. yeah. things like that. Yes. So. Uh, have you experienced um, having your friends not like somebody, and how does that? How do you handle that? Um. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it was after. Uh -huh. It wasn't like oh, I met them and I don't like them. It was like after they hear the stories of what I've they been going you through. through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's funny because we were I, actually. I'll tell y'all. I did have. Um, I've had three people. That I'm uh, dated, meet somebody. I was actually dating a woman last year, and this was the first woman I dated openly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had a whole thing. Like, I, my parents came to visit me, and I was like, well, I'm dating somebody. I want you to meet them. And I told my parents before. And it's so funny because my mom was like, well, you know, Brandy, you've never been like a PDA person, so... I just don't expect you to start doing that now when we go to dinner. <laughs> like, she was kind of giving me, like, a layout. Like, don't be in here kissing this bitch. I don't want to see you bitch. kiss no bitch in front right. of me. Right. Oh. Um, mm. And so it was interesting. But, like, no, nah, my parents were really cool. I feel like that was the first time I actually had, like, a oh, let's go sit down and, and have dinner. And this mm -hmm. is the person that I like. Uh, mm -hmm. thing. Other than that, it's just been like, oh, come to the house and, you know, meet my parents. But that was the first time that happened. And it was fairly soon. It was like one month in. Oh, oh shit. Wow. Yeah. Fresh so why, that motherfucker. Yeah. why with her? Um, I thought it was something special. Mm -hmm. And also, my parents were coming to visit me. And I just felt so involved in that situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, oh, my parents are coming. I want you to meet them. Like, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, I also met her, her, her brother 
like within that same month and mm-hmm. so went out of town with them and everything it was just like we were really open to being around each other's friends except my best friend had flew into town I was like you gotta meet this person yeah. it was one of those like every, I wanted everybody to meet her yeah. uh-huh. you know so um, Aww, yeah that's cute. Right. it yeah, was it cute it's, it's over it's, it's crash and burn <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but yeah fuck. it was one of those things <laughs> um, but also I feel like we were both in a space where it was comfortable and we both felt that way mutually mm-hmm. so it wasn't mm-hmm. like any pressure or anything weird it was just yeah. like I'm excited so, about this person yeah they're so cool <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up I wonder I should look that up because it seems like a running thing that same sex relationships seem to move faster yeah than Definitely I've always heard that U-Haul. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they call it U-Haul I can U-Haul. see that you say U-Haul what you say that's what they call it like with lesbians U-Haul U-Haul truck relationship or something it's like they just start dating and move in together oh yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah see yeah I've we heard that together, like but. you know like my mom like, sent who wants her, to like, move in with somebody after four birthday weeks present. oh really like after like a couple of months she was like what's her address I'm gonna send her a birthday present <laughs> and that's the reason I keep my mom away from people too cause people be thinking that I like them more than I do cause my mama <laughs> cause, my, cause my mama act like was my mama act like that yeah yo I remember my mom she got too invested in one of my relationships and that's when I learned thankfully it was the one right before we got serious Mm. and so i saw i learned a lot that about how she would move um once she actually started to like him and i was like i just i need to pull (laughs) away a little bit because she gonna get herself too involved Mm -hmm. because she seemed more hurt that me and him were talking again than that's because what you told her though no it was not she was not hurt because of that she Mm. was not even hung up i don't even know if she remembers me ever saying that to her what that i was gay You have to stop bringing this up. It it has come up in like 15 episodes. You have to let it go. We're not retelling this story. Anyway, so no, that she wasn't heard about that. She just saw we were talking, then we weren't. We Mm. were talking, then we weren't. Like she's in, in her mindset because is she, you know, was still the patriarchy, sexism, whatever you want to call it. In her mind, you running, I mean, us coming. You know, together, back and forth, was because you were Mm -hmm. on bullshit. She had no facts on our relationship. She just saw one minute we're together and we're hanging out and she hears about you. Then the next minute I'm dating somebody else and you're not being mentioned. Then the next minute you're back. And then she's like, so she saw that and she thought it was because you were on some fuck shit when mm-hmm. actually both of us were. And mm-hmm. we just respected that about each other. Yeah. Thanks. So, um, so she didn't, she didn't get all that. And so once you were actually there to stay and it was like, she really, it really hit her when she was at my house and she was just talking about how, I deserve better than you and all this. And then he uses his own key to get into my apartment. Ooh. And she's standing there. Yeah. And she was like, yeah. can't write it. Uh, hey, you see what the fuck uh, going on. This guy. I'm and so, this load I nicely, your daughter and then I had let her know that you were coming. I was like, so since you, you know, you don't like him, you may want to leave before he get, oh, he's here. Yeah. He's here. Yeah. <laughs> You may, you may want to kiss she, everybody, greet everybody. All right, now he, I'm going to dump this load in your daughter. <laughs> And she, she shimmied on what? out the door because she didn't even want to be in the same space with him at the time. Mm. Now she fucking loves him to death. But at the time, she was like, oh, no, because she was trying to send a message to me. Mm-hmm. Right. And I was like, girl, I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do. And that's how you So even live. if this doesn't work, ah, I yeah. had fun. <laughs> there you go. That's how you got to be about it. But, yeah, so I was just thinking about our whole whole process mm. and, and everything and all the shade that his mama has thrown me over the oh, years. Oh, come on. Um, We're not going to talk about that again. We just <laughs> talked about that 15 times on this show. <laughs> but have I listed out all the things? Yes. No. <laughs> you listed enough. Emma Jean is just, she's just finished. She's stuck in her way. She is just, oh my she's God. a different type of Brie. I, I tell her, I'm not this sure she likes me all the time. You know? <laughs> it just is what it is. My mama just, my mama, she going to be, she going to be Emma Jean. Yeah, Every day of the week, she Emma is. Jane. Bless her, my, her, my sister boy, they don't. Whoo, they be clashing, <laughs> and she she is adamant about moving out there with my sister to be closer to her grandkids. It was your sister's idea at first when she first had the when um the first baby mm-hmm. when KJ was a solo act mm-hmm. and she was a new mom and she was like, yeah, I want mom to move out here. 
And then your mama came out there for that summer, and she was like, "I never want her to come yeah. back." <laughs> oh shit! But they had already like had already had a, a very volatile relationship yeah. even before that. So I, very when true. she said that she wanted mom to go out there, I was like, "That you shit sure ain't gonna work." Mm-hmm. That shit ain't gonna work. Because I know I know how Melody is. Like Melody is no nonsense, and like she's very like no. Oh, wasn't it, it a long time before your mom met your sister's husband? Wasn't it like damn near at the wedding like it was they were yeah, together probably, for a yeah. long time they started before. dating in, in high school or college and so um it, it's very possible yeah yeah. Oh, wow. yeah yeah but um okay so jumping into our next segment mm-hmm. the i want to know is there a a celebrity or a former celebrity that you're like where are they now that you haven't seen in a while. Hmm. We had um somebody give us uh Fonsworth Bentley. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was like Ryan Pumper. Uh, you that was you. <laughs> You're the only person concerned about where Brian Pumper is. I feel like I used to see him on Family's campus a lot. I can see that. <laughs> on the or set. What's he doing? Some just some just hanging, hanging out. Hang about to say <laughs> some <laughs> girls gone recruit. wild shit. Mm-hmm. Um mm, Shit, I feel I, you know, and I saw this question, and I was trying to think then when I saw it. <laughs> it's just like who? Because you don't be thinking like people really be out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Like you don't see a person long enough, especially when it comes to like celebrities. You be like, does such and such stop? Like no, no, like, right? Oh, because I ain't seen them in a minute, and that's where you go to. The <laughs> right, you just assume they died. I do the same thing. <laughs> I ain't even talking, excluding myself. Like I do the exact same thing yes. when I don't oh. see a celebrity in a while. Um, I- I mean, this is real random, and it's probably like he's probably doing movies or something. Mm. But I, I feel like I haven't seen. Um, it's his name, Brendan Fraser. Oh, Brendan oh, Fraser, yeah. Because you know yeah. he was like he was like in he a, was a, he was, he was in a, for like a blast second. from the past. He was in a lot of movies that I yeah. used to like. The mummy, all and the then mummies. The, um, he played the the Stone Age man. Mm-hmm. Oh and it's yeah, just the like, man. Yeah, he yeah. was so. Where is he? He's right. So he had a lot of stuff happen a to him. Lot. He went through a very bad divorce. Okay. Uh, and during yeah. that time, when you said what made his divorce bad, like worse than other divorces? Um, I think it was like it. The, from what I read, it seemed like she wanted it, he didn't. Okay, and he wanted to be there for the kids, and I think she got like a lot a of lot the of earnings money and, and the and house and all that. So he fell on hard times, and then once he was out of the eye for so long, you know. I, out of sight, out of mind. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He he was a he was a leading actor. Like yeah. the mummy and all that shit was mm-hmm. because of him. Yeah. So you gone for a while, it's kinda hard to get that spot back. But he's been popping up here and there, okay. small places, trying to get back in the limelight. It's just yeah. you know, like he's he's gained some weight, mm-hmm. you know, he looks he's sitting up here mm-hmm. and life looks like it's happened to him. That's so crazy <laughs> that like... you just off the top of your head knew all this stuff about Brendan Fraser. Because I, I felt the same thing. One day, yeah. I think that was like last year, I was like, what the fuck happened to Brandon Fraser and I looked it up and it was actually an article about it because a lot of people yeah. were like yo what the fuck happened to Brandon Fraser this yeah. nigga was everywhere yo. Right. everywhere and this he was like a little heartthrob too. yeah he was, he was a yeah. nice looking guy yeah. especially with the long hair that what was that George of the Jungle mm-hmm. oh yeah they, he was that yeah. too he was tight yeah yeah, okay. yeah. dang <laughs> yeah yeah Brandon Fraser man like, but uh, apparently he's gonna be at some twin twin cities convention twin cities con what is that he yeah. actually looks nice right there. It's a nice well, little I don't right know there. how old that picture is, okay, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. But yeah, so Brendan, Brendan Fraser is still out here getting I wanna, it. I, I need to see him with a beard. I feel, I feel like he's at the age he needs to embrace the beard. Like, remember when yeah, we see, see Carell did the beard with the gray hair? Oh, he looked like, oh, so yeah. good. I was like, look at Steve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he turned from, he turned from Steve to Steven. You feel me? To Steven. Well, he always crosses yeah. his legs when he sits. I love, yeah. love, love when men have facial hair. Like, uh, a bald-faced man just rubs me the wrong way. It's only a few in my eyes that can get away with mm-hmm. it. A bald-faced man can't rub me. <laughs> <laughs> the right that? or the wrong way? <laughs> the right that? or the wrong way? <laughs> you so stupid. Um, okay, so Brendan Fraser, he's still out here at I don't he's know what Twin Cities con- convention is, but he's gonna be there. So go see him, you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's similar to Comic Con. Okay, okay. Oh, and he was in um, Doom Patrol, so that's not that. But that's that a old. cartoon, though. We didn't see him. True. Yeah. 
Cause that's that's the cartoon, right? It's a little Doom dumb Patrol, car- is it? I, don't know. I thought it was. I thought that's what my nephews watch. It no, you thinking about Paw Patrol? Girl. Oh, ha 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 ha! <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you. <laughs> no, it, it is an actual TV show. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So much TV. So much TV. There's so um, much to watch. <laughs> Looks like it's on HBO. Okay. Oh wow! See, if this is a recent picture, then yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's a terrible picture. Yeah, that's... He looks real Steven Seagal in that picture. (laughs) Boy, wait, hold on, though. Like, and this is in a couple of pictures. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's hard to come back like that. Yeah. This has to be prosthetics, but this one right here, that is... Hopefully, that's for the movie, too, because... Man, he looked like a Dunkin' Donuts manager. Because, I mean, look at him with the hair and the tan and I shouldn't do that. (laughs) I shouldn't talk about that. Look at that. Yeah, I think this might be him now, guys. This is... So Brendan mm. Fraser, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. okay. Life is life. Yeah, I'm not even talking about the weight gain. It's the hair for me. That's a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you never know. That nigga have a comeback like Target did. Target was on his way out here. Target was actually lower than Kmart at one point, mm. and then Target got that rebranding. We just doing the dot. Did you just compare? Yeah, yeah, Brendan yeah. Fraser a, a to two chains to come back. The, people won't fuck with two chains when he was titty boy. Nobody, no, no, that ain't a oh household name. God. You can just be something Sometimes walking around saying titty boy. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. True. that Sometimes motherfucker came back as two chains and changed the game, nigga. <laughs> so, um, and is there a song that you used to sing when you were a kid that was too um, grown for you to sing? Mm-hmm. What was it? Sing oh, it, sing shit. it, sing it. Sing it, sing it. What he about to show us? Oh, well, I was just going to say, that's the Tribeca Festival 2021. 2021, so yeah. That was last year. Well, and he's still out there making moves at the trial. Well, I mean, he's still he's still out there though. He's still out there. I want the best for Brandon Fraser. Let it be known, said here right now. It's your song. Um, so I have uh one. uh, So one of the two songs. I, you guys want to hear the one that a guy wrote to me in the letter in the second grade that got yes. confiscated? Okay. Con- that got <laughs> confiscated. Yeah, my second grade teacher intercepted the notes oh, coming no. to me. And it was lyrics of, um, can I lick you up <laughs> and down till you say stop? <laughs> He's me a play little boy. Me, <laughs> and like intercepted the note. Um, <laughs> I want to say his name was uh, Mr. Pope. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we had a parents teacher conference <laughs> after that, and like yeah, he had to talk to his mom. He had to talk to my mom, and really? she was like, "These are song lyrics," but he like wrote them on like the double wide paper. Uh-huh. And I was remembered as my mom, like, well, "What did it say? What did it say?" <laughs> like later, and then another song I used to sing uh, when I was little, well, that I probably shouldn't have been singing, was like. Uh, um, do you mind if I stroke you up? I don't mind. Do you mind if I stroke you down? I don't mind. All through the night. I don't mind. Make yeah. it feel <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Just shouldn't have been singing that. Yes, that's still second grade. You know what? But I get it. Because I was definitely sitting in my third grade classroom. Like, show me yours. I'll show you mine. <laughs> like, in the classroom fast, fast. in downtown. Fast downtown. Fast, and that girl. was that was my idea. Like, no one talked me into it. <laughs> 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 Don't sit me by little boys in, in third grade. Trouble. Uh, trouble. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, before we get out of here, um, anything you got coming up? Something you want to humble brag about or not so humble brag about? Let us know. <laughs> this home. Um, I mean, you can just catch me around. Okay, where can we find you? What's your IG? What's your I'm on, your social media? I'm <laughs> on Instagram <laughs> at Brandy Denise Boyd. I'm Brandy with an I. And I guess just like my humble brag, I just like got back from doing Just for Laughs New Faces. Let's go. So good, which was, uh, I was in Montreal. Yeah. And um, they're going to be releasing that they aired, they they filmed it so that's going to be coming out um i have something that i'm about to do it's just a lot of stuff coming <laughs> up but i can't talk about it yeah. but okay, no montreal so- was very good to me and just ah. just know your girl's about to be back on your tv screen season three we didn't have any season three of games people play uh-huh. unfortunately which is fine because it just opens up the door for other uh, TV shows and things like that, but now um, I'm just out here working, mm-hmm. um, 
Yeah, leave good. It there. Oh, that must feel good to be out here working because there's mm-hmm. some folks that's in your industry that are not. That yeah. so. <laughs> So Barely. happy, <laughs> happy Barely. that you're out here working. Yes. Um, okay. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Yes, I've y'all well follow Brandy Denise Boyd on the socials. On the socials. And this has been another episode of More to the Story, y'all. Mm. I'm Farron Moore. I'm to hear more. Thank you, and we'll see you next and I'm week. I'm Brandy Denise. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> I'm so extra. <laughs> no, no, no. You're just you're just enough. You're good. <laughs>